This feels a bit weird because it's so much better when you're here. Yeah, and I was actually thinking, I'm like, I haven't set up in here in a while and for you. And I'm like, when was the last time we filmed? Was it August? And then we had two episodes. So we must have, we must have not done this since July. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It feels weird. Yeah, I think I'd rather drive to Philly. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I know this makes me so nervous. This, especially the, the last time we did the, uh, it like this, yeah, some, right? Yeah, the internet went right. The internet went right. Yep. Then you got phone calls. I got phone calls. Blah, blah, blah. I got a, attorneys calling me. I remember that. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah that was that was stressful. I, I hid it all in the editing. So yes, yeah, so, <laughs> so it's there now. <laughs> Let's have a look at their automatic. Sorry, come on, come on, internet connection. Uh oh. Uh, you know somebody, you know when you like ch choose your internet connection? Mm -hmm. uh, the, one of my neighbors has... <laughs> Is it good? Uh, uh, no, has a, no, no. Has, a, <laughs> has an internet, uh, their router or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah right? sure. It's, it's called, and I'll bleep this out, it's called slow sh internet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, the shoe fits. Yeah, the shoe fits. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Watch Talk with uh, none other than Mark from Long Island Watch. How are you, sir? Same, doing great, doing great. I uh, can't complain, everything is wonderful. How about you? Very busy, very busy. Good. I have hardly any time for YouTube, but I, at least hopefully this will yeah. make up for my absence. I hope so, <laughs> I hope so. If you missed the last episode, I'll put a thing here. Uh, what did we talk about? It was luxury versus... Yeah, it was luxury versus affordable because the one before that was my collection. Yeah, luxury versus affordable. That's right, that's right. We haven't done a top 10 list for a while. No, we have not. This has been highly requested. Yes, I'm ready. Wristwatch check, please. Oh, so what, do we, what is the video topic? Top 10 GMTs, right? Yeah, top 10 GMTs. And we, you asked me, you know, we were talking about it, we're like, I'm like, do you want GMTs or do you want dual timers? And you're like, well, let's, let's open that up for discussion. So yeah. I'm wearing two, two dual time watches. So on one wrist, I have the uh, Seiko, you see it, right? Yeah. Uh, the SNR, SRN049, the titanium spring drive. Nice. True, true. Traveler's GMT, 100% GMT to every stretch of the imagination. Right. Other wrists has, I'll show you. Ooh. This is a Zin 757 UTC Chrono, but this is really a dual time watch, not a GMT, because the secondary okay. hand rotates twice a day rather than once a day. Uh, okay. So right. I figured we could maybe open up with that discussion before we get into so watches. Yeah, yeah so like what do, do you that? qualify as a GMT? So a GMT to me would be a two time zone watch, okay? Mm -hmm. And the second time zone, or the first, whatever you want to say, is displayed in a 24 hour format, such that you know if it is AM or PM at that second time zone. Okay. A true, true <laughs> GMT would be one where when you change the time, you're changing the local time not the 24 hour time, such that if you were a pilot and one clock is always set to GMT or Zulu time, because mm -hmm. GMT is a time zone, right? Mm -hmm. um, when you jet set to different time zones, you just change your local time. GMT time does not change. change. GMT time right. is always the same time. So that to me is a true, 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 this is a true GMT. Um, and you may want to put up the you know, you did a little thing when I reviewed my collection on this watch where you showed when you move the hour hand, the yeah, date yeah, changes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is a two time zone watch. The little yellow hand is individually settable in 12 increments around the dial. So it shows a second time zone, um, also a bezel maybe with 12 hour markings, but that's not a GMT because it's not showing you AM versus PM. Right. So I think all yours are GMTs. 
I think all mine are, Jim. Yeah. You see, I, I qualify it to me, I qualify it by that fourth hand. Yeah. And that is the correct definition. Right. Okay. I think a lot of people confuse the difference between dual time and GMT. When somebody asks for a GMT watch, a lot of times they just want a watch that's going to show the time in two different time zones. So that's the way I kind of interpret it as a, as a vendor. You know, they like, say, hey, someone said I want a GMT watch. I'm like, well, you know, you can get a watch with two 12-hour clocks on the face, right? Two different, mm. two different batteries, two different movements. That, to me, for that person, might be a GMT watch. It's a dual timer. There we go. I, I have nothing more to add. Uh, I'm sorry. But, no, it's fine. It's perfect. Uh, but but we, we should also mention, because you asked me, can I include a world timer? Oh, yeah, and I did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you did? I did. Okay. Yeah, because I feel like that is also another way that you can display an infinite number of time zones with a world timer. You know, the most popular one, I guess, would be like one of, one of the paddock world timers or whatever, but I've got one in here that does the same thing, and it's, you know, relatively affordable. Mm. Mm. I'll just do quick. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Shit. Just keep, no, it's fine. I'll just before I forget, because otherwise I will forget. Uh, Dan Henry, 1962. Yeah, sorry, I always get confused. On a collar rib. Nice. I, I haven't worn it on this combo, but I think it kind of. It's works. nice. It's nice. Brown, brown and white works. Yeah. Anyway, done. Done. Right. So, w would you like to go first? I, I, I always do, right? It's very, yeah. very polite of you. <laughs> um, I will open with, I guess, you know what, I don't know if I'm really going to go, you going any particular order or are you just kind of... I am, it? I am. Are you? I, my number one is number one and number five is, almost didn't make it because... Because <sighs> it's $4,000? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, because I got a bone to pick with this brand. Oh, okay, no problem. So I'm actually, yeah. I, I like all these watches, I have it in, in no particular order. So I'm going to okay. start off with uh, uh, Lac Laco Frankfurt. Oof. Which is... I, I had no idea this even existed. Yeah, it's a new watch. It only came out, I would say, two years ago. Is it two? Two to three years ago. And um, God, it's kind it's of funny. Because the guy I know at Laco, um, mm. shout out to Sebastian. I met him in New York and he had just had a baby girl. And we were talking about this watch at the same time. And I said, what's the name? And he said, Frankfurt. And I was like, oh, it's an odd name for a baby girl. And he, he, meant, he meant the watch, not the child. He meant <laughs> so every time I email him, like, how's little Frankfurt doing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's get into it. So beautiful watch. Um, I guess it yeah. fits the definition Oof. of a GMT. It has the fourth hand is a 24-hour hand. They've tucked the date at six. So it's unobtrusive. Yeah. Um, it runs on what they call Laco 93, which is really just an Eta 2893 that they do some work to, uh, mm -hmm. elaborate grade. It's a 43 millimeter case, a little bit larger, but beautiful. Oh, damn it. Yeah, sorry. Beautiful sand blasting though, because it's got that Laco aesthetic. Um, you know, kind of. You know, like a lot of their their higher end fliegers are all the sand blasted cases. Yeah, to be, going yeah, way back. Right, right. exactly. To, to to be um, authentic. Uh, double dome crystal comes with an extra strap. Comes in like a really big um like a steel suitcase, uh, aluminum suitcase. Mm. It's really nice. Remove before flight stuff on it. Um, Such a clean design. It is, and you you know people don't realize this, but you kind of have three time zones working here, um, if you want. You know, obviously the crown at the four is for um, you know you unscrew it, change and set the time and stuff, um, but the inner bezel is rotatable. So mm. that 24-hour GMT hand denoted by the orange arrow, um, you can either change where that arrow is. You know, with that, with setting the, the time, uh, setting mm -hmm. the, the GMT hand, or mm -hmm. or you can rotate the inner scale. So if you kind of have in your mind, you know, right half of the dial is AM, left half is PM, you can kind of differentiate three time zones from this if you wanted to. They didn't mark mm -hmm. it as such, but um, you could kind of do that if you wanted. Uh, let's see. Oh, price. Uh, just under the two grand, so 1990. They make it like this, and they make it in a dark gray dial as well. I'm absolutely, yeah, I'm in love with this design. I love the the two crowns, the way it's kind of almost flush with the crown guards. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, they flare yeah. out just they flare out just enough that when they're screwed just in, enough. they 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 hide away. Um, there's nothing extra on the dial that isn't needed. Um, there's really nothing you would want to take away. 
Yeah, uh, not a lot of text. beautiful design. Yeah, they, they did a nice uh, job. I presume for this money, obviously, real blue. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hands. Just like on their, you know, over thousand dollar fligras, real blued hands. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful strap. I have to say, I love Laco, uh, but I've always found them a little bit too stuck in the past. Sure. But this is exactly what they need. This feels modern. Yes. It feels, but yet it retains their heritage. Yeah, their, their DNA. Their past. Yeah, I, the, the nine and three, and of course you've got that Flieger triangle, the dot. That's yeah. What it's, oh, date placement, oh, it's just, damn, if this was, yeah, I don't know, 39 millimeter, <laughs> I, it, yeah. I'd be buying it. I get it, I get it. It's yeah. it, it really nice looking, really took me by su surprise, I would say. Yeah. And not a bad seller for a $2,000 watch, I'll be honest with you. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, well done, Laco. This is this is this is where they should be going. This is what they should be doing. You know. Yeah, definitely, making new stuff. Yeah, very very cool. Um, right, I'll go into my next one. Okay, where are we going? I'm very conflicted about this watch. Okay, because uh -oh. I I nearly I nearly I nearly didn't want to put this in the list because uh, they have some real customer. Uh, care issues. Okay, I'm saying customer and service issues. Customer service. Sorry, yeah. So I, I, I've, I own a uh, Yema Superman. I love Yema. I think they have got great lineage, uh, wonderful history. That was started in 1948. Yeah. From uh, Besancon, I think it's pronounced. Uh, incidentally, it's like the capital of watchmaking in France. Okay. Uh, but but also the birthplace of Victor Hugo, which is kind of cool. But anyway. So they came out with the Superman 1963 with this uh, locking mechanism for the, for the, uh, the bezel. I'm looking right? at it now. It was kind of an innovative thing. It, it, they were very, very successful. And it's, because, it's like their iconic watch. Then they had the, the rally graph, and then, and then they made uh, watches that were even worn in space by a French astronaut. Quartz crisis happened. They ended up being owned by Seiko. Oh, really? I didn't know which that. Is, yeah. So, which is crazy. Is. Um, and then they got bought back, it was changed hands a few times, but finally it's in French ownership mm -hmm. and independent again. And they have, uh, they, they invested like millions and millions of dollars to produce their own movements, okay. made in France. And they're great, I, I own one. It's, it's kind of like, it's pretty much an ETA, but just tweaked and got it. they learned how to make it themselves. Yeah, which is clones, they fantastic. all are. Salida's the same yeah. thing. Yeah, okay. So hats off for them in that regard. But after I bought mine, uh, I recommended it to a friend. They tried to buy it. And I, this is, you know, anonymous. Um, and I keep getting comments. Oh, you know, the customer service is really, really bad. Yeah. I, you know, I tried to buy one on your recommendation. And I have a duty to my audience, right? Yeah, I'm going to recommend course. the best, right? right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't want, if I recommend a watch, a, a thousand people buy it and, you know, a, even a few are upset. I, d I don't even want that, right. you know? Right. So I'm very fussy, very picky. So, okay, we'll test it out. Uh, my friend ordered, they took the money, long, long story short, uh, weeks passed and they were like, oh, they refunded him and, and uh, it, it's, it was just a big waste of time. Okay. And this has happened a few times <laughs> and, and uh, you know, not to mention the, the feedback I'm getting. So it's like, on the one hand, I love the brand. Right, right, right. I love right. what they're doing. Right. I love the Superman. Right. And in this, this instance, They've mod, uh, added a GMT complication, mm -hmm. and I believe it's another in-house movement, which okay. for a thousand dollars is very, very impressive. Right, right. They've also recently won back a contract to supply the Marine Nationale, which again just boosts their whole right. legacy. Right, right, sure. So they they've got all the right components, but they they're missing that. Yeah. And I don't know anything about. Um, uh, sorry, how do you... Customer how do you service. So, customer service, right? That's the correct term. Yeah. Customer care, whatever you want to call it. I, but without it, you're nothing. You can have the best thing in the world. No one's going to buy your stuff. Yeah. So I was really hesitant to put this in the list. But on paper, it ticks all the boxes. Got it. So caveat emptor. <laughs> yeah. Buyer beware. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just have that in mind. Um, and it puts me in a little bit fearful what happens when it comes time to serve his mind. Right. True. You know, what's going to happen? I almost want to anonymously test it out just right. to see. Got it. Mm. 
Are you going to talk about the watch or that's it? <laughs> yeah, that's it. No, the watch is great. Honestly, it actually, looks awesome. Can you tell me how that thing at the at the crown works? Right. The, so the little lock. Now, a lot of people misunderstood this from my reviews, and I, although I tried to explain it, you know your conventional screw down crown. Yeah. It goes a little bit further, so it's not. Okay. It's not. You're not going to endanger the water resistance by okay. unscrewing. It just a few turns and it loosens. That's it. And oh, it's like a clamp, I guess. Like a clamp built into the oh, crown. It's... Like everyone's okay. scared that you know, oh, he's going to flood, you know, flood the Got case it. and blah blah blah. No, 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 no. But in a GMT context, yeah. I think it's genius because it you lock in that second time. So zone. when you go to rotate it, is it very smooth? What the, is the, it the crown or the the, the, the the bezel? The bezel itself. When you go to change time zone, um, is it a smooth change I, or is it a clicky or does it have no stop on its own? It's a clicky one. Yeah. Okay. It's ratcheted. Yeah. Okay. I can't remember how it's much cool. I did review it, guys. So have a look back. But I'm looking at it. I mean, it's got box sapphire crystal. It's really nice. Yeah, I mean, for for a grand, a proprietary movement. You know, 39 millimeter size. Everything, oh. everything's perfect about it. Just get your bleep together. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll sell more watches. <laughs> back to you. Okay, so I'm just going down my list, man. So. Nice. Oh, what do these people want to give me a coupon? Yeah, I'm on the site too long. They want to give me a coupon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'm now looking at. I'm going. I'm going. Zin. Okay. Nice. So this is a 757 UTC Chrono. This watch is I don't know, uh, way over budget. But you can get the 856 uh, mm -hmm. UTC without the Chrono. Um, and it is. Uh, it's beautiful, right? It, yeah. it retains the Zin DNA. Mm -hmm. uh, 12369, big numbers. Uh, definitely the Flieger type. Beautiful hands. Their loom is amazing. Mm. Uh, just everything about the watch is, uh, I don't know, it's simple. It's beautiful. You know, it's doing things simplistically and beautifully mm. uh, is very difficult. Uh, we're looking at 40 millimeters. It's 11 thick. Uh, let's see, 200 meters of water resistance. You got some of their lovely in-house technology. Yes, yeah, so now the case itself is what they call tegmented stainless steel. Um, similar to Damasco's nitrogen ice hardening, this is also tegmented. So this bracelet and watch, uh, well over a decade old. Mm -hmm. um, no, I don't wear them every day, but the the steel has not taken on a scratch yet. Mm. Uh, so, and couple that with a sapphire crystal, the watch is gonna look new forever. Um, it's got the little capsule inside that changes color if nice. it's got humidity in it. Nice. Um, let's see. Oh, so the, what's what's inside? We got a uh, Salita SW330, which is, you know, basically their answer to Ed is 2893. Price is 2100 as listed here on the website on the leather strap. Find them used for a hair under two grand. Um, but a beautiful watch. Uh, I will say, since we had the GMT discussion in the beginning, UTC stands for Coordinated Universal Time. And you say, well, then why isn't it CUT? It is a agreement between uh, France and pretty much the US or Britain. Um, it's the, the, the way it's said in both languages, um, the order of the letters changes. I so see. UTC is technically English. universal time coordinated, but mm -hmm. no one calls it that. Called it calls it that is coordinated universal time. So coordinated universal time is not a time zone. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a standard. It is the standard that all of our atomic clocks, GPS satellites, everything else is set to once a month. Right. Um, the, at the lab in France, they take all. This is. You can cut this out if you want. <laughs> they take. <laughs> they take every country's atomic clock. Uh -huh. There's hundreds of them. Um, they take all that data uh, and they distill it down and they issue a correction to coordinated universal time and they send out ah. that correction signal once a month. GMT nice. and coordinated universal time are technically just about the same time, but GMT is a time zone. Right. Where, you know, London, right? Uh, coordinated universal time is a standard. This is the standard that GPS clocks are set to. Ah. Wow, I did not know that. Thank you so much. You know that now. You're welcome. I'm definitely giving that in. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's great. Um, I have to ask because I notice when I talk about watches, about 75% of it is history. <laughs> yeah, not me. And when you talk about watches, it's about 90% engineering and what the watch does. Yeah, like even when I do my videos, I always tell people, you know, I'm like, um, like Aviate and Spinnaker, for example, a lot of their model names are based off of 
famous divers, you know, Dumas. Uh-huh. Um, they did, they just did a, I just did something with some guy that that helped develop the P-51 Mustang. Mm-hmm. I don't care about that guy. I mean, I'll tell you who he was. I have to read about it. Mm-hmm. I can tell you about the watch. I can tell you what goes into it, you know, what mm-hmm. it's made out of, how it works, everything. The history, you could research on your own. Or, you know, you could watch your channel instead. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I, because I, I do respect Zinn an awful lot. Because yes. they're, even though they're relatively... They're the youngest... Um, brand we've mentioned so far i think yeah i've got but, a younger one coming but yeah right and but in that time you know they've gone to space and with german astronauts they've been issued yep. to the german police a whole ton of stuff you know yeah and sure for me it's very important because i guess i like the romance of a backstory got it you know like mm-hmm. if, if what i wear it has to mean something beyond what it does Understood. Do you, do you get what I mean? Yeah, I, we are on opposite sides of the spectrum. Yeah. Well, you come from an engineering perspective, and it's yes. very much, you know, yeah. the nuts and bolts. Uh, yeah. Yes. I take, like, my 6139 from 1975. I just think it's cool because it's older than me, and it was Seiko's first chronograph. But other than that, the whole thing with Pogue taking it to space and blah, 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 eh, it's cool, mm. but not my thing. I'm more just like, wow, here's a chrono that works with one button, <laughs> um, you know, start, you know, whatever. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Cr- you don't have to pull the crown out to wind it. It's all that stuff. Yeah, right, we're, we're right. different. Fair enough, fair enough. Hey. God, that is the most legible dial you could Isn't possi- it? possibly ask for. Yeah. Crazy. Right, okay. So Moving I'm going right to along. Where moving are we going? along. Uh, talking to history segues nicely into the Glycine Airman. Perfect. I knew that's where you were going. <laughs> yeah, so when, when we did the top 10 pilot watches, Yes. Shout out to my friend John. I knew he'd comment. He'd sa- he said, what about the airman? Little did everyone know that eventually we were going to do GMTs. Right. So for me, I think the, to, to do a list of GMTs and not include the airman would have been of a course. bigger travesty than not including it in the pilot world. Sure, absolutely. Swiss brand, founded in uh, 1914, now famously owned by Invicta. We discussed this today. We discussed that also, yeah. It's, yeah, it's in, made in the same factory. I haven't seen any noticeable change in the quality uh it's just what would people like to see the the brand go under or it continue with its right. own autonomy and 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 independence. sure yeah it's, I get it's, it. a, it's a money thing yeah of course it's an investment they wanted the prestige yeah. and glycine needed the money to, to keep it existing yeah, absolutely i get it and the other thing is people say oh yeah but have you seen this um uh this giant because they've done some really crazy uh, airmans, more modern. Okay. That was from before Invicta. Right. They were trying to, they were like grasping at straws. They were trying to make it relevant, you know. Trying so, to survive. But if you go back now for underground, you can get like the 36 mi- uh, millimeter version, the, the very historically impo- um, faithful to the 1953 original. And they are beautiful. Right. They're real like tool watches. Came out just a year before... Um, the, the Rolex GMT, the definitive GMT. Okay. So it wasn't actually technically a GMT like with the hand until yeah. a couple of years later. Okay. Uh, famously worn by US uh, Air Force pilots in Vietnam, a huge military right. following in the, with the, the, the US military, mm-hmm. and also worn on Gemini 5 with uh, NASA astronaut Pete Conrad. So it's their most iconic watch. I love it. It's got this old world kind of 1950s elegance with this slightly l- retro toolish look and the vintage models are gorgeous. There's one with blued hands and a, and a, and a sunburst gray dial, the, the Chief. Uh, just, right. you know, all I'm different. looking, so I'm looking at the page that you sent me. Yeah. I have it open. So what do the two crowns do? This is very similar to the Yemma. Uh, the, okay. The, the, cr- the second crown locks the oh does it the bezel oh, yeah. Okay. Good question. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Well, you're welcome. Yeah. So you know, you're ETA s- box standard ETA blah blah blah. Sure. Know. The only the only Achilles heel with them is the water resistance isn't that good on the old, on the vintage inspired ones. Like, like I like to say, if you're a pilot, you need water resistance on your watch. You got bigger issues. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but the new ones are you know souped up kind of so am i seeing 24 hour dials and 12 hour dials yes yeah okay cool. yeah so that you can get a choice of which which way you want to oh yeah look at that they have am pm on the left side right oh that's cool i like yeah. that back to you sir 
So, I'm now going Seiko, unfortunately discontinued. So, I apologize for this. Oh, okay. That I'm doing it, but you know, you can find them. So, if you want them, you can find them. This is, I'm going to the Sun 065, S U N 065. It is a GMT diver. Um, it was a kinetic, which is probably one of the reasons why it's discoed because mm. Seiko doesn't do much in the kinetic market anymore. At least in the US, there are none. Uh, kinetics just had a lot of issues with, um, you know, they need more vigorous winding than an automatic because you were turning more um, right. to generate power. Uh, I can't say that's what the reason, but I think they had a lot of uh, just customer issues with them. So uh, is, is Seiko phasing them out? Um, in the U.S., I haven't seen a kinetic in years. Uh, in in the on the on the U.S. official market overseas, it, it could be. I haven't mm, really. I know there are a couple overseas, but this is why I like there's like um, a famous trick out there where somebody showed how you can wire an electric toothbrush charger to mm -hmm. charge your Seiko Kinetic wires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, because nice. it's, because if you if you're remotely sedentary, but you you generate enough movement for an automatic to wind, you uh -huh. may not generate an order for a rocket. Anyway. So at, when they were new, they were about 750 bucks. I did look, you can get them used now for around 500. It's a oh, beast nice. though. I mean, it's large, it's 47 and a half millimeters. Oh my God, um, I'm looking at, uh, I'm doing a Google. Sorry, yeah, Google, look at it. Google image search, because I want to see the side of that case. It's mental. It's big. It's a big case. It's, you know, magnetic resistant. You know, it was ISO certified. Uh, what else do we have? It was at 5M85 kinetic movement, but Jesus. this was, like this is the only watch in my countdown which like this guy is a true 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 traveler's gmt so the way you set this watch um and i know i did a watch and learn on this i featured this watch years ago when i first started the series right. it might be like video number three or something right. so if you're looking at the watch you have the two silver hands and the orange hand you set the watch first by setting the orange GMT hand to the time zone you want it to be in. Right. Most notably, probably GMT mm -hmm. plus zero, which is, you know, if it's a GMT watch. Then you adjust, when you go to adjust the time on the hour hand, um, the, the, the 12 hour time, the hour hand just clicks in one hour increments. Nice. And every time you pass through 12, the date goes forward one because it's local time. And you can back through 12 and the date will decrement one. Nice. Really cool. So if you're a pilot going across a date line or something, um, yeah. this is like I said, like a traveler's GMT, a true. But piece yet, of my mind. I don't, but yet you go can ahead. go deep diving with this. So uh, unlike the glycine that had the problem, you could go yeah. deep diving with this bad boy. This one was Patty um, endorsed. Wow. It's you know what's amazing about this is the case, the side of the case. It's got this yeah. kind of slightly futuristic. Shroud. Yeah, it's shrouded. It's a bit like a tuna, but it's yeah, it's yeah, exactly. It's quite yeah. extraordinary. I, I yeah, really cool. love the way it's got, is, are those screws in the side? I don't think they're, well, they are. They don't do anything other than... Just look cool. Yeah, other than <laughs> fall out and require you to have to go to Seiko to get new screws. Right, right. <laughs> it is a beast. Yeah, it is. I, I do like the look of it, I have to say. Yeah, it's a cool, it was a cool watch. Very, very diver, Seiko diver dial layout. Um, oh, yeah. A hundred percent. I've never seen this one before. It's, it's yeah. uh, like it, I said, it's really quite something. Cool, cool watch. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I, just, I'm just I, and staring I think the at it. Now. Button, I want to say the button at the two, mm. if I'm remembering correctly, I believe you hit that and it it tells you your power reserve. Uh, um, you know, like how, like the second hand will do a with little With one dance. of the hands, right. Yeah, right, like right. the second hand will we'll, we'll go to 12 and then it'll wrap around. I'm pretty sure that's what it did. That's very handy for diving. Yeah. Oh, sure. Make sure before you go down, make sure you're not going to die under Yeah, it. that's genius. Absolutely genius. What a cool pick. It's a shame they need to bring this back. Imagine this with a spring drive. Well, that's... <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and titanium. And titanium, yeah. Oh, talking of titanium. Oh, what did we just segue into again? Is that my next one? Yes, I it don't is. Know. Oh. This, I, I put in the list thinking, oh, it's two, two grand or whatever, right? And then, then I look and it's like, oh, it's four grand. And I was like, damn it, am I going to have to take this out? I'm going to include it. You know, sure. because it's I two, You know what? I'll give you one of my two grands. And so two grand, two grand, four grand. Perfect. Perfect. 
It's the Fortis F43 uh, Triple GMT. This thing is another beast. I've talked about Fortis before, founded in 1912, famous for their cosmonauts, uh, were supplying the Russian Federal Agency since 1994, and they're still going now with the Amadi, with the Mars, uh, Mars mission. Yeah, Mars watch, yeah. Which is crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, but even before that, they were the first to uh, produce the, uh, the very first automatic watch with the British horologist John Harwood. A lot of people think it was Rolex. Well, John Harwood worked with both Fortis and Rolex, so this was around 1926. So their history goes way back. They had a few problems in 2017, but they've got a new owner who invested a huge amount of money and is bringing the brand back. This is part of a whole new generation of, of reinvented fleegers. And when I mean reinvented, it's, this is not marketing. They took every component and, and stud, like you look at the bezel, the way the, the coin edge is done, it's angled, yeah. it's, it's designed to grip. And the, everything about this watch is, has been almost over-designed. It's like, it's like a lesson in design. It's all about form, form and function. There's no pretense here, it's just... So the bezel rotates. Yeah, bezel rotates. That 12-hour bezel, I guess that's their third time zone. Yeah, and got they've it. got this new, uh, I, I can never remember how you pronounce this, but this particular loom that they've made three-dimensional to make it more legible at angles. Oh, cool. Very, very cool. So everything has been carefully, carefully nuanced and evolved. Most impressively, they've got the, what they call the Work 13 movement, which is the same movement in the Tudor GMTs. Oh. So you've got a full balance bridge, really, really stable, solid, solid movements, massive 70 hour power reserve, uh, COSC certified. And if I think this is actually better value than uh, Tudor GMTs. I think this is, this is probably why like, I'm going to forgive it and I'm going to keep it in the list because right. if you spend four grand on this, this is worth every single penny. That's cool. Uh, it just ticks all the boxes, and and the only issue for me, it's it's it is forty three millimeters, but mm -hmm. it's it, it doesn't wear fingers of uh, the titanium. It's completely titanium. True. Um, and I gotta say, I, I wore it absolutely fine on my wrist. I reviewed this along with the oh, okay. um, the, the 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 date and time only fleegers, which are just without the GMT, and those are steel. Those do come in smaller sizes. I'm hoping. Fortis, if you're listening, I'm hoping they'll do this in a <laughs> in a smaller size. I think this 39 would be amazing. Um, and the typical neon bright colors. It's it's funny. You look at it and it's got the Flieger dial. Right. But at the same time, it looks like it's from the future. Yeah, definitely, it does. Which that's what you want to do. You you want to build on the tradition you already have. Right. They supplied every. You name like. Yeah. An elite air force, and I bet you there's a there's a uh, right. Fortis. They've done one for them, you know. So there's so much history. Again, I'm I'm nerding out on the on the history. You're, but, it's okay. You're allowed to. But they, this design, this this, the, they've really put so much thought into it that it's got both. They deliver as a tool, right? Uh, but at the same time, with the heritage to back it up, so it's got a three-day power reserve too, huh? Seventy yeah. hours. Wow. It's nuts, right? Nice, really nice. Yeah. Good. Right. It sounds like I'm just like rambling, but um, I think I think hopefully people will realize that my love for this brand they 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 don't get the recognition they deserve. They really right. don't. Right. You know, I'm going to be flying the Fortis flag forever because they deserve to be. Well, they they disappeared from the limelight for a, a long time. I mean, I remember when I first yeah. started in this business, they were distributed by some small company out of like New Jersey or something. And mm. then they kind of got given up and I would say they floated around for a while, like, I guess until someone reinvigorated it. Yeah. Well, this is what's happening now. You know, they've got the, the investment, um, which is they deserve. They, they deserve to be um, reborn like this. And they're, do they're doing it so right. Right. Because you know? they're not trying to be luxury. They're not, they're, they're making, they're kind of like what, they're taking the Zin route, you know, which is a great trajectory to go on because it, it's faithful to their uh, roots. Right, a technology route. Yeah. yeah. Right, it sounded like I was ranting, but. Um, no, you're not, you're good. Yeah, okay, back to you. Okay, so this would be now, this would be the youngest company I'm sure we're going to talk about today. Oh, okay. Uh, cool. I'm on Ferrer, which I Ferrer. don't know if it's a brand that you're familiar with. Uh, is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. I'm not. I've a, always kind of, wondered. Well, how do you want to say it? Farer? 
<laughs> far no, I'm, 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 How about Belova? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm going um, Ferrer, I guess. I mean, it's a British company. Far, uh, far. Yeah, never mind. Far, uh, far, uh, far, uh, far, uh, far. I guess, you know, it's actually named after, um, like, Seafarer. Like, um, that's where the uh, brand name okay. comes from, like a travel, like a seafarer. Fair. So maybe it's fairer. God, look at that. That is fairer, gorgeous. Fairer, Ferrer. Whatever it is. Ferrera Rocher. You're making... You're delicious. You're making it... <laughs> they're making an awesome watch. So they are actually from... Yeah. They're founded in 2015 by a couple of people. Um, so, ah, okay. So it's, so it's micro brand. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, nice. British inspired and... Um, but, you know, they're all Swiss made watches. They started off with a bunch of quartz pieces and now they're into the automatics. So this guy is... Beautiful. This is the Lander 4. They have a bunch of GMTs. I just picked this one because I love... They pop up on my Instagram feed all the time. Um, I love their use of color. Sorry, I have to interrupt. They have a watch called the Rocher. Oh, do they really? <laughs> Perfect. Yo, is that deliberate? Is that very clever? Or, I, or that's that, that has to be deliberate. They're taking the pee out of themselves. Of course. Right? Yeah, that's genius. You have to be. Sorry. Uh, that's okay. It's <laughs> awesome. I love it. Uh, <laughs> um, I just love their use of color. I think they do an awesome yeah. job. Um, with everything they do, they this came out with like um, you know Segway, and they came out with a, a mono pusher automatic chronograph, um, mm. a whole bunch of really nice stuff. So at, let's see, price is fourteen fifty. It's a thirty nine and a half millimeter case. Yes. So yeah, you nice. should enjoy it. Um, yeah. uh, Salita SW three thirty movement, um, nice box sapphire crystal. I really mm. just. I really just like the watch. I think it's, like I said, there's a whole bunch of them in the same vein, but this green dial is just like, oh my God. I was gorgeous. about to say, you, 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 you think that's green, do you? Uh, maybe greenish blue. Because I thought it was blue, but. I go greenish blue. Greenish blue. It's, it's very particular, isn't it? Yeah. I, yeah. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it really I is. Love I love mean, the It numerals. sets off I... nice. Everything about it. It's just different. It's not like a watch that you see. At least it's not a watch that I come across in my daily life. I love the skeletonized... Uh, yeah, the rotor. rotor. It's really nice, yeah. right? Yeah, no, it's... I think they Slick. make a great watch. I don't know how many pieces they go through or sell a year or whatever, mm. but... Um, no. Oh, the, the the dial is called Sea Green Sunray. Ah, there you go. So, yeah, it's, you think sea, you, see, you think blue, yeah, but... What about blue? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is like seaweed. <laughs> seaweed, there we go. Seaweed. That, yeah. Right. Uh, but, no, I, that... Really, for me, this one is one its first 100% looks. No technology, because there isn't much going on. I mean, it's it's a, it's a drop in Salita movement, but I right, feel like right. there's a, a nice amount of, there's a good amount of, of, of visual design going on, and it just yeah. makes a lot of sense. I love the fact it's 10 millimeters tall, because yeah. it makes it very dressy. Yeah, Sli slips under a cuff. Um, they do a bang up job, I would say. Yeah, they do. This is gorgeous. I need to look into this brand. I really do. I've I've heard of them and I have seen them on the Instagram. Right, you and I both. I just yeah. The thing is, and and I think you said this to me in the past that I don't really feature that many micro brands. And the the truth is, is that with Dan Henry, the Hemmels of this world, uh, who else? Who else is a micro brand? Oh, Laurier, mm -hmm. another one. I I feel like I'm micro out. I'm happy. Yeah, I hear yeah, you. Yeah, I'm like, they're, they're so good, like, I, it's very difficult to... I understand, sure. You know, come up with something new. Yeah. This definitely does. This is very, very, it's, it's a beautiful design. This is about design, not necessarily trying to reinvent the wheel here. You are 100% correct. Yeah. Yeah, what's with the crown? What's, they got some little inlay. Some kind of, yeah, it's a, it's a, it says it on the bottom here, I was reading through it. Do, 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 do. Crown, rounded stainless steel with solid bronze cap insert featuring the embossed Ferrer A. Nice. You see, like, the, the first A in their name is uh, a little bit, is different. Nice. I guess, I don't know, like a spaceship. Slick. I think that's the word. Yeah. Uh, um, sorry, now I'm looking at all their other watches. You should. They're, they're nice looking pieces. Yeah, I'm definitely going to look into this brand. I'll send them an email. I mean, if if they're willing to lend in a watch, I'll review it. If yeah. as, long, as long as they pay the shipping back, that's all I ask. That's all cool. I ask. Well, there you go. Look at that. I just hopefully I just got hopefully I get some residuals off of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool.
cool. Well, thank you for bringing that to my attention. You're welcome. Actually, I'm gonna change the order of this. I'm gonna oh. I'm gonna go Squale next. Okay, um, no problem. I don't want to put it at number one because I genuinely feel my number one is the best out there. Uh, mm -hmm. Value for money, all, all the rest of it. But uh, and number two for me is the Squale Sub 39 GMT Vintage. Quick little s summary of Squale. Uh, founded in 1946 by Charles von Buren, he basically made cases for, and I, I haven't got time to list all the brands that they did the cases for, uh, but a few of the big ones like Doxa, Blancpain, they were, um, who else, uh, Hoya, um, so many, so many, and they were there at the, the very infancy, the, the, the birth actually, forget infancy, the birth of the contemporary dive watch as we know it. A lot of the cases Blancpain used on their, on their first dive watches were from Squale. And they, they continued until the 70s and then they became their own brand. Right. I've always been a fan of the uh, 1521 and then they came out with the Sub 39. And I talked about this recently in a video, how that came about. I visited uh, Andrea Maggi, the, the boss, the owner, and he, and because I was a big fan. And uh, he pulls out this little 34 millimeter, gorgeous little thing. And he said, and he asked me, oh, what do you, what do you think of this? And I, and I was like, it's beautiful. If you made that 39 millimeters, you, you got a hit on your hand. Right. And he did, that's what he did. Right. Two, two years oh, later, he did, yeah, yeah. he did just that. And he really nuanced the design, made it and created this new sub 39 line. Last year, was it last year or was it this year? For which? They brought out the GMT version. This was, that was this calendar year. This was this year, okay. Yeah. I know why I'm getting confused. They sent me a prototype last year. They yeah. wanted to know my opinion. Yeah. The bezel was unidirectional. Yes, I remember and, this. And I said, make it bidirectional. And it's, it's perfect, it's great. Right. So they did that and it delayed them, but they, they listened to me. And, I, and right. so I have a little bit of history with this watch. Right, right, right. I, now, I have my own, they, they did the limited edition, the, the no date. Yep. When it, when it first launched for me. So, and that's become my favorite watch. I love that watch. Right. For me, mm -hmm. it's perfection. Size, heritage, design, yep. everything. It's just, oh, beautiful. So now they have this GMT version. It's a true GMT. Uh, it's it's a little strange because it is it is a diver. But is it a diver? Yeah. Is it a GMT? But whatever, it does everything. Yeah. Um, right. The same, basically the same specifications that you, only you have the ETA 2892-2 for the GMT now. Um, and, and they've done it in a kind of faux patina way, but not too much. Um, Great size. Yeah. I haven't really much more to say about it, to be honest. Okay, then. Yeah. <laughs> then moving on. Okay, moving on, yeah. <laughs> uh, am I have my last one already? Yeah, this is your number one. I can have lunch soon. <laughs> so this is, um, we're up to the, we mentioned in the beginning, you had mentioned about a world timer. So I'm on the world timer. Ah, so okay. I apologize if this is not your idea of a GMT watch, but I am on the Orient, an Orient Star. I carried this at one point, but I stopped because for an Orient, it's pricey. Um, let's see what the price oh, wow. was. One thousand thirty-five bucks. Mm. Uh, model number JC uh, Quadruple Zero One B. They make a couple different variations. Mm. So it runs in there a forty H six sixty movement, forty hour power reserve. Um, just really quick, the watch itself is 41 and a half millimeters in diameter. So if you can find one, they put this watch, they put this movement in a watch, uh, the World Timer CEY04002B, which is a watch I used to sell for same movement for mm. around the $350 mark, 400 bucks. That was a bargain. But they discontinued that one, of course. So this is a World Time watch. So looking at everything in the center, you've got, you know, regular local time in with two hands. Uh, you have uh, seconds at the bottom, and I, what I believe is a date indicator at the far left, which mm. I really don't like. Mm. Um, they, I, I know why they did it for aesthetics, but I hate rotating date indicators like that. Power reserve at the 12. So the outer bezel is, um, the outer outer bezel is cities around the globe, right? Mm -hmm. So GMT, most notably, zero, you know, zero is at the uh, is, is at the, is at the 12 right now mm -hmm. um and then you have paris cairo you know it goes all the way down moscow karachi all the way around and if you look you'll see 19 gmt minus 5 is new york city 
The way this works is you set the internal rotating bezel. I believe it is the ah, outer rotates. one. Okay. Yeah, but you set it with the crown. I believe it's uh -huh. the right. So I be, and it's only one crown. I believe it is. I haven't handled one of these in, in years, but I believe it is the uh, twenty-four hour ring that rotates with the crown. Mm -hmm. And once you set it, that disc rotates um, once an entire day, such that the time. The, you set so you set the time. Let's say it was midnight in London right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just for, for for argument's sake. So over in New York City, it is indeed seven o'clock at night, uh, and then three hours before that would probably be yeah, LAX is Los Angeles. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. Right. Basically, that th those two rings keep up with each other in perpetuity to always display the correct world time anywhere in the world. Got it. Um, so it is showing you GMT, sure. Um, but it also shows you every other city um, around the globe or every other time zone. It doesn't do half time zones clearly, um, but you could figure that out if you wanted to. That's interesting. I haven't seen a watch do it that way in, uh, yep. before. I was just curious, how, because we went with Orient, you went with Orient. Why didn't you, I, I, was, I was thinking you were going to select the Orient Star GMT, you know, you know that one? It's, it's cut. I do, you were talking about the Star Seeker. Yeah, Seeker. it looks a bit like a Grand Seiko. So I had already done one that was discontinued. <laughs> I didn't want to do another watch that was right, discontinued. Right, right. Uh, my honorable mention while I'm yapping would be the Orion Polaris, right. which is discontinued. Yeah. That um, I used to sell, I don't think I have the price up anymore. It was a couple hundred bucks. Talk about a beautiful dress watch, GMT. Mm. Discontinued, I have no idea why. White dial, blue hands. I mean, the watch sold. I don't know how hotcakes sell from McDonald's, but it sold like hotcakes. The watch sold what amazingly. What about that one? The Polaris? That, this is the Polaris? No, no, the Polaris was the DJ05, ah, I'm sorry. Okay. This, I think, this Orient Star that, we're talk, that I'm talking yeah. about, the JC whatever, it's $1,000. Mm. And, and that's a problem. You know, Orient just came out with a watch. I'm on their newsletter. I have to admit, I haven't been keeping up with Orient because... Yeah, yeah unfortunately, neither have I. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> Have they kind of fallen off a bit or? You know, well, wait, 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 what was I gonna say? Oh, I think they came out with a moon phase. Mm. I wanna say it's a true moon phase, I think. The watch is like three grand. Yeah, what so are they doing? So they're outpricing themselves, in my opinion. Orient, um, have they fallen by the wayside? No, I think their production numbers are still very high. I may have mentioned this on your channel in the past. I may have not. Um, they've become a victim of their own popularity in that when you get popular enough, the gray market really starts to eat up your business. Mm. Um, and they're simply just, at this point, producing so many watches. Um, various distributors have to meet their yearly quotas, right. and they flood the gray market with watches. So, you know, whereas an authorized reseller like me sells an Orient Ray for whatever it might be, 170, mm -hmm. you go to Amazon and get it for like 120 right. or something. It's, so it's kind of, it's killed my Orient business, definitely. That's a shame. Uh, <clears throat> um, but, yeah, I don't, you know, they were bought over by Epson famously many, many moons ago, mm -hmm. and it was a very quiet transition. And then starting a couple of years ago, now the case backs are marked Epson, and they were merged into their, what, you know, Seiko Epson, they were merged into what they call the wearables group. Um, what on earth does that mean? Wearables means wearable technology. Uh, so okay. you think, you know, I think wearable technology, I think smartwatch. Yeah. But I don't, I think this is like the bastard child they had nowhere to put. So they put them in wearables tech, but they don't really belong there either. They don't really, you know, Seiko Epson doesn't really do jewelry. Um, so yeah, they I make feel like printers. Yeah, yeah, they do. Um, Seiko Epson obviously makes a whole bunch of stuff, but right. I, I feel like this is definitely not one of their core competencies, and I don't think it's going to be an area of focus for them. And I don't think it's a big money maker for the for the corporation. That's sad because they. It is sad. They got a good history. You they know? have a big history. It's at this yeah. point, it's probably over 70 years, I guess. Yeah, and the capability of making things completely... They make their own in-house movement, yeah. which nobody does except Seiko, and then the expe really, really, really expensive people. Yeah, that's a real shame. No, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I um, ended on a depressing note. Nah, that, <laughs> sucked. that sucked, man. <laughs> Can I go again? <laughs> <laughs> go for it. No, go, for can, it. go ahead. <laughs> okay, so my number one, um, and I wonder how many people guess this, but... It's the Laurier Hyperion. It's funny, I, I, I'm a big fan of the Neptune. I've been a fan of theirs since the very first watch, uh, mm -hmm. which was the Neptune in 2018. Loved it, great diver, beautiful kind of 
hybrid of it was a bit bit Omega, bit Rolex Submariner, but big crown. Right. But not a blatant ripoff. It was refreshing. It had this right. wonderful it's, a, it's own take. Yeah. And since then, they've developed the, the. They had several other releases. They did the Time Only Watch. They did. Um, they have had their Chronograph. And I followed them. I haven't re reviewed another watch of theirs because, you know, I was happy with what they're doing. I, I, I didn't feel I need to cover the brand again. Right. So, uh, I, I, this one though, I had to get my hands on it because the spec alone and the look of it was just like, oh God, I need to, you know, I need to review it. And it. Every time they do a new watch, they really up their levels right. consistently. But at the same time, it's still got the core kind of design traits like the broad arrow hand, um, this very kind of angular lugs, the, the beautiful bracelet. This is one of the few watches that I always wore in a bracelet. You know, I'm not a big bracelet guy. So anyway, I reviewed it fairly recently. I want to say, was it this year or end of last year or whenever it was? $799. Um, you've got the uh, Soprod C125 right. automatic, and they've made it really thin. So it's still with the domed, uh, I can't remember yet, domed Hesselite, which kind of pees it, you know, some people. I people, know, it's a, a hose. Why am I spending $800 for a yeah. acrylic crystal? I get it. You know, they poo poo it, to use your language. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. <laughs> sorry, that's no, nice. you can you can poo poo. Morale totally destroyed by poo poo. <laughs> okay. To use your, your phrase. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's fine. Um, they they prepare it. I get it. They wanted to go for this vintage thing. and Sure. So, you know, get some... Um, what's Poly it watch. Poly watch. Boom. Poly watch, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it's just... They, they did a better job at making a Pepsi GMT than Rolex did. Right, I get That's it. what I really think. Mm, I, the right. colors are spot on. This kind of burgundy red, this... this Kind of subtle blue. It's it's a it's a more subdued royal blue, and then the right. the, the bezel looms up, and it's right. just which doesn't on the Rolex. And I, I, you know, I I reviewed this with the gilt dial, and I was thinking, I was looking at it, and I was thinking, you know what, I could sell my Rolex Pepsi, put the ten grand into something else, buy right. this. Obviously, I'd, I'd regret it forever. You know, it's like the, the way prices are going. You, you kind of yeah, like, please. You, yeah, you're stuck with it really. So I'm I'm not. Anyway, sorry, totally different video. That's okay. Um, in investing in watches. Investing in watches. But they, they've got the roulette date wheel, which is a nice little touch, and it's their thing. They do right. vintage inspired the way vintage inspired should, should be done. Right. You know, I think them and Dan Henry totally. Right. Dan Henry take, has his take on it. His spin, right. Yeah, but it's an amalgamation, a confluence of. You know, a little bit from here, a little bit for oh, I like that. Right, no, I don't right. like this. Boom, and then they do something that's theirs. You know. Right, I get it. Um, I'm with you. Yeah, uh, the Bakelite uh, inspired um, bezel is just—it's just beautiful, and yeah, it's the perfect it's size, nice. 39 millimeters. I think it's a hit. They always sell out. I doubt, you know, guys, if you want to buy one of these, you'd probably be under looking at. Notify me when available. Now expected September 2020. Oh, okay, cool. Because well, we're only... in September, so. Yeah. But honestly, if you can, snap these up because uh, they don't do a ma big amount and they right. always sell out and it's absolutely worth it. Yeah. There cool. we go. I like that's it. My, that's my number one. Well, that's a good number one. Yeah. Tastefully done, I think. Tastefully good choice. Done. Thank you. Uh, well, your choices were fantastic. That's okay. I think well, except, they... I, except I ended on a sad note. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, what, what else? What, what should we do for next uh, next oh, time? Are I you coming know. down to Philly? I think I, I probably should. I yeah. probably should. Now that school's in session and it seems like everyone's <laughs> staying in school, cool. um, you know, I... I I like it better. I mean, I agree with you. Yeah, it's it's better now. I've got the lights and the, all the cameras yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, guys, please nominate your subject you'd like to hear. Top ten lists. Actually, I think I I like doing the concept ones. You know, like luxury versus affordable. Right? Sure. That was yeah, really me too. fun. That was yeah, a it was. great one. Um, so, guys, what subjects would you like to see covered? Please do share that in the comments below. I'm going to say a massive thank you to Mark for sponsoring the production of this video. 
keeping the lights on here at, yeah, uh, in hey. the war room. Thank you so much. Understood that. Don't forget to check out Mark's channel. I'll leave a link down below. How's the uh, How's the um, Instagram doing? It, uh, we broke 50,000. Yay. So we're getting there. We're getting there. It's fun. We're check out moving. Mark's Instagram as well. Oh, did you see my new artwork? I, w I didn't know You're the it. first person, this is the first video I'm filming with the new artwork. Oh, it so, is, nice. Yeah, so this was a, um, I did a contest where I said design the next case back for the Islander series. Because uh -huh. uh -huh. I did a very simple design. Um, so we had a lot of submissions and some guy, Christian, over in I think Germany, he drew that. It's a sketch. That's incredible. And I, it's so funny. And then one of my graphics guys took it and he's like, oh, he colored it in. Nice. And I was like, oh, I'm like, that's my backdrop. Like, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. So. I love it. It's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Mark, as always. Thank you. And Got it. stay tuned and we'll catch you in the next one. Oh, and don't forget to like this video. Very important. Of course. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for watching. Ciao.